welcome today we're going to take a look at the templar class in the first half of the video i will show off the skills and uh, explain both morphs and in the second part of the video i'm going to talk a little bit about pve and pvp then i will also make sure to put quite a lot of links of different builds into the description so you can go check them out and see a little bit more about the class because this will just be a general overview then also make sure to not forget to subscribe for even more awesome content anyway let's get started now we are going to talk about the free skill trees i will talk about the passives at the second part of the video so we have radial sweep empowering sweep this morph makes you take reduced damage so you see also reduces damage dealt to you by 15 percent plus an additional four for each enemy hit and crescent sweep deals additional damage to enemies in front of you so you see it's like up to like 66 70 percent which can be really nice and it also has a dot effect Next up we have Puncturing Sweeps, so there is a Stamina and a Magicka Morph, both look the same, it's just this one is for Stamina, stamina users. It gives you also Major Savagery, increasing your weapon crit. And Puncturing Sweeps, instead of giving crit, gives you 30, like when you deal damage you also heal, so also heals you for 35% of the damage run. so this is actually really nice. That's why Templars are a really easy class to start off, because as long as you spam this skill, you basically can't die, because it's it heals you for so much. And it looks cool. Then we have Piercing a Javelin, so there's two morphs, Aurora Javelin, this, this one deals additional damage based on the distance the spear travels. And the Biting Javelin, this one is a stamina morph, this one like stuns the enemy for a longer duration. Let's just check it out. Focus Charge, so there's also two morphs, Explosive Charge, deals damage and interrupts all enemies near the point of impact, and then Topping Charge, always stuns the enemy regardless if they are casting, and it also sets them off balance. Spear Shard, so this is an AoE skill, we have Luminous Shards, this restores stamina and magicka over time, and then Blazing Spear, Spear ignites ground of impact and it stuns and disorients the enemies, usually people choose this morph. Sun Shield, so Radiant Ward has reduced cost and the shield is stre strengthened further for each enemy hit, or Blazing Shield, so Blazing Shield kind of like if enemies damage your shield when it explodes the damage will go out to the enemies Dawn's rough skill tree so first of the ultimate Nova really strong ultimate costs a lot 250 points so solar prison so any like your allies can activate a more powerful synergy really helpful in pve for example solar disturbance the enemy gets snared while he's in the nova and it looks freaking cool then we have sunfire so we have vampire spain and reflective light so vampire spain like lasts longer it is only one like light ball though and reflective light has like three small light balls so i will show you that it like the, it's more damage on several enemies but lasts shorter and this is more damage on one enemy now we take the other morph you see you can hit both targets now this one needs a little bit practice because it's really hard to shoot like to shoot bow like all those free balls to the enemy sometimes it has targeting issues solar flare so there is dark flare this is a single damage skill slow projectile the but deals insane damage and then we have solar barrage so this is kind of a aoe skill and it also gives you empower buff which increases your next attack by 
Then we have Backlash, so this is two morphs, a Magicka morph and a Stamina morph. So what this does is it puts like a beam on the enemy over his head and he kind of sucks up the damage you do to the enemy. Once the maximum damage is sucked up, it like kind of explodes on the enemy and it deals damage. So you see maximum damage here could be 17k. And because Power of the Light is a stamina version, I don't have a lot of stamina, is 5.6k. Then we have Power of the Light, the other morph. Next skill is Eclipse, so there's two versions, Total Dark, so this one's like you're healed for each spell that is reflected. So you can put this on the enemy and as long as he has it, it will reflect the spells and heal you. Then we have also Unstable Core, so this one no longer reflects the spells back to the enemy, but it kind of makes an explosion. Sadly, you can break free from that. The last skill, Radiant Destruction, AK Jesus Beam. So this is one of the strongest, this is probably the strongest execute in the game. Radiant Glory, so this heals you based on the percentage of damage inflicted. Really strong heal. And then the Radiant Oppression deals additional damage in proportion to your current magic. So the more magic you have, the more damage you will do. This skill tree is completely like focused on healing and resource management. So the ultimate first, this is of a healing ultimate. You and your allies also take less damage while you're being healed, so you take 20% less damage. And then the, this morph, like it increases the duration. Both look the same, now when I use it. Sadly you can't move while you use it, so you're stuck. But you also gain more like armor and spell resistance through a uh, passive, which I will explain later. Rush Ceremony, so this one is one of the main heals. There is Honor of the Dead. So this only like refunds part of the ability's cost when used to heal an insured target. So you, this is a really like, it doesn't cost a lot as long as you don't spam it on full health targets or friendlies. Breath of Life, on the other hand, like is pretty expensive, but it heals you and another insured target for quite a lot. Now, looks like this. Healing Ritual, so this skill is not really used, that's why I can't even morph it. <laughs> so this is uh, the problem with this one is like you can you can only move slowly while you use it and it it takes a second to cast restoring aura so there is two morphs radiant aura nobody uses this because you get the same effect from potions it's a completely useless morph repentance so this one is one of the strongest stamina resource management f because when you see there's you need a dead body for it and then it kind of consumes the dead body, so it sucks up all the stamina. And you see the second text when you activate the skill, you restore health and stamina. So your stamina basically can grow from 0 to 100% if there is 5 to 6 targets on the ground. Really strong ability. Then we have Cleansing Ritual. Ritual of Retribution increases the healing and also damages enemy who stand in the area of effect. So this is a huge circle which heals you a little bit and it also gives you increased healing. Extended Ritual. So what this one does is it reduces more negative effects. This can remove five negative effects and this is only two, but this one do deals a little bit of damage. Looks like this. It's huge. So everybody that stands in here gets small damage and gets also snared due to a passive. Rune focus. So there is channeled focus. This is a really strong magicka resource management tool. So you see, reduces the cost and the rune also recovers magicka. So every half second you gain 120 magicka. 
That doesn't sound like a lock, but but it's really cheap. It only costs 900 magicka, and it lasts for 15 seconds. Then we have restoring focus. What this one does is it gives you minor vitality and minor protection. So you get 8% more healing and you take 8% less damage. Both look the same. It's, it's a smaller rune. And as long as you stand in here, it's really nice. Once you go out, the effects are still here, but they only hold for another 7 seconds. Once the effects are gone and you step back in only for a second, you get all your buffs again and you can go out again for 7 seconds. Now let's talk a little bit about the passives. So Adric Spear has really strong passives in general. First off, Balanced Warrior. This is mainly for stamina users. Increases your weapon damage by 6% and it also gives you some spell resistance. Burning Light. So whenever you use one of those skills, Burning Light has a 25% chance of proccing extra physical or magic damage. Like, when you're a stamina dude, it will proc physical damage, when you're magic, it deals magic damage. This is really strong, it's, re it's insane. This one increases the amount of damage you can block, and then this gives you a 10% critical strike bonus on your crits. Dawn's Rough, so those here are sadly not that's strong. First of all, you have this one. It increases the duration of your skills by 30%. That's actually not bad. When Prism, whenever you activate a skill, you get free additional ultimate. 6 second cooldown. This one is helpful for our magical setups. Whenever you use one of those skills, you get 5% spell damage buff. And then this reduces just all costs in general. Restoring Light. So the passives here are quite freaking strong. Mending increases the healing effects from your restoring light abilities by up to 10%. Depending on how strong you're wounded. That's not that strong, but now sacred ground. So you see, by standing in your own own let's say skills, for up to four seconds after leaving them, you gain major mending, increases your healing done by 25%. That's insane. So whenever you stand in the rune, or in the big circle, or in any of the other abilities that are ground based, you get 25% increased healing. And then you also see enemies standing in your cleansing ritual rune focus area of effect have their movement speed reduced by 30%, so it's also a snare. This is really strong. Lightweaver. This, you see, the last text, general rite of passage as the ultimate grants a 65 bonus to your armor. So, so you're really tanky while you use the ulti. That's basically it. And then, master ritualist, so you can rest people faster and they stand back up with like 100% more health. So that's actually also really helpful. So you see, this is completely devoted to healing, these three. Now for PvE and PvP. Magicka Templars are really strong in melee fights, Stamina Templars as well. Then there is a lot of Magicka Templars like in general in PvE because they have one of the strongest executes here and really strong self-healing from all those skills or even while you're doing damage from like punching sweeps. So it's a really strong overall class and if you're a beginner it's actually really nice to play with. Then again, even endgame, Magicka Templars are seen a lot. Stamina Templars not that much because they lack a little bit damage, but are still very viable, of course. You just need to know how to play them correctly. I will make sure to put quite a few builds into the description of the video, so you can go check them out. Then, for PvP, Magicka and Stamina Templars are both insanely strong. Magicka Templars have huge healing capabilities, and especially when you when you wear heavy armor, it, you basically can't kill them because they're so strong. It's it's kind of dumb how OP they are. Same for stamina templars due to their like healing tree here, which they also can use. It's just the healing they get is so 
strong plus there is just some really nice skills that you can combine together with like sword and board for example or two-hander which also makes them really strong so mag magic and stamina templars in general is just really strong in pvp and pve just need to know how to play them correctly i will make sure to put links of builds into the description so you can go check them out get some more information because this has just been very basic and i just want to kind of explain you quickly what each skill does i really hope it helped if you have any questions ask me in the comment section below thanks for watching and have a nice day cheers